The Adobe Video World 2020 conference is coming up in September, so if you're interested in becoming an Adobe Certified Professional in Premiere Pro or After Effects, now is your chance. Tickets will get you access to prep courses and the exams, and everything is entirely online. Now, I've partnered up with Future Media Conferences to offer you a 10% discount, so follow the discount link in the video description to find out more. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create these flickering opacity transitions inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, quick disclaimer, this is a really advanced tutorial. In fact, I'm not gonna be using any keyframes. All the animations you see here are gonna be created using expressions. So if that's really intimidating to you, don't worry. You don't even have to watch the video. I actually created a free preset that you can download. Follow that link in the video description and you can go pick that up. And as always, donations are appreciated for those freebies. So I'm creating this map animation for a vlogger friend of mine named Jay Swanson. He's a vlogger in Paris, and he's starting this series where he's doing tours of each arrondissement within Paris, and he needs a map animation intro for each video. So we're starting to put together the look of these map animations, and this is kind of our first pass. And just yesterday I came up with this look uh, using only expressions, and I was really happy with it, so I wanted to share this video with you and show you how I created them. Once I finish all these animations for Jay, I'm gonna be sharing a full project breakdown so be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. There are 20 different arrondissements within Paris, so I have 20 different layers for the fills and 20 different layers for these stroke animations. Now, we're just gonna be focusing on the fill elements right now since that is where those opacity flickers are applied. So I went ahead and shied all the stroke element layers, and right here you can see these are all the fill elements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just right click and go to effect and I'm gonna remove all of the current animation effects. So now we just have all these solid layers and the stroke animations are, are still kicking in the background, but again, we're not gonna worry about those. So I'm gonna isolate the first little section here and we'll play this back just to make sure nothing's going on with this layer. So there's no opacity flickers right now. Okay, so this one's ready for us to animate. I'm gonna create this flickering via a wiggle effect on the opacity but I'm gonna be creating presets at the end to easily apply these to all these other layers. So to keep things nice and neat, I'm going to use a transform effect and use the opacity of the transform effect. So I'm gonna apply this to this little arrondissement here, and here is my opacity effect. So to open this up in the layer here, I'm gonna hit the E key, and that shows us all of our effects. I'll go down here and select opacity, and then I'll hit S twice to isolate that. And I'm gonna hold Alt to add an expression. Now, the wiggle effect is a simple wiggle, the word wiggle with these parentheses. Now I could enter into numbers, you know, which are frequency and amplitude. Frequency being the number of times per second that this is gonna be applied, amplitude being the number of pixels that it's actually going to uh, jump or the, basically the number of opacities. But I wanna have tighter control over those numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter my own variables that I'm gonna assign. So for frequency, I'm gonna type in FREQ, and for amplitude, I'm just gonna type in AMP. Now I've made these up, and you can see here they're separated with a comma. I'm gonna hit enter. Now we get an error message here because this really isn't doing anything. So I need to assign these two variables that I created to something. So what I'm gonna do here so I'm gonna close out the transform effect and I'm gonna right click in the effect controls panel with my layer selected. And I'm gonna go down to expression controls and grab slider control. And now I'm gonna rename these. We'll do frequency and then I'll control D to duplicate and then hit amplitude. So these two sliders will, will control our wiggle. So now I just need to assign these. So again, I have this error message. It says undefined value used in the expression. So what I need to do is I'm gonna assign these. So now, now when I type in these, it's bringing them up because it's reading them that I've already put them in there. So I'm gonna type in this FREQ equals, and then I'll grab the pick whip down here, and I'm just gonna grab my frequency slider. And then to close that off, I'm gonna hit semicolon, and then I'm gonna hit enter, and we're gonna do the same thing for amplitude. I'm gonna type in AMP equals, grab the pick whip over here, and assign it to amplitude. And now I'm gonna close that off with a semicolon. And now when I hit enter, that error is gonna be removed and this is being applied. So there's no error message, but there's nothing going on here. And that is because both frequency and amplitude of our wiggle are set to zero. Let's bring the amplitude all the way up to 100 and set the frequency to something like 30. And now if I play this back, you can see we now have our opacity flicker. 
Now bringing this flicker in and out could be as simple as keyframing my amplitude slider. So if I bring the amplitude down to zero, you can see that nothing's going on here. So we could just simply do that. But working with keyframes, anytime I move this uh, layer, I'm gonna have to move the keyframes and then doing that with 19 other layers, that could end up being a lot of work, a lot of pain in the wrist. So let me show you a much better way using expressions. So I'm gonna close out the transform. I'm gonna open up Amplitude, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add an expression here holding Alt. So for this, I'm gonna be using the linear expression. This is an interpolation method that is gonna allow us to apply minimum and maximum values of another attribute and assign those to our Amplitude slider. So that's a really simplified ex explanation of what this does. If you wanna do a deep dive, um, on this because it can be a little confusing. I highly recommend you go check out Evan Abrams' channel. He has a really great video on the linear expression that kind of makes it crystal clear, so go check that out. Another great resource is Euchre Media. Um, they have a great YouTube channel that has a ton of different videos on expressions. And in fact, I learned this expression uh, from their premium expressions course which I highly recommend. I haven't finished it quite yet, and I don't make any commissions off of that, so if you sign up for that, I don't make anything. I just highly recommend it. It's a great course. Also, if you want to check out another resource I made, it's, uh, it's a video called Five Resources for Learning Expressions. Um, you can check out some free courses to learn expressions and some other really cool premium options. Anyways, so we're going to be using different variables of time to control our amplitude. So I'm going to type in time, and now we need to specify the minimum and maximum values. So first minimum is the endpoint. So this, this is where we want our animation to start, is right at that endpoint. So I'm gonna double click this. So when the playhead hits this endpoint, we'll tell it what to do with amplitude. So for the maximum, we're gonna type in endpoint and we're gonna do plus one. Since this is time, it's gonna be a second after the playhead hits the endpoint. So now we need to specify our amplitude. What do we want the amplitude to do at these two points in time? When it's at endpoint, we need to assign our minimum of our amplitude, which is gonna be 100. So right when it hits our endpoint of this layer, it's gonna be full blast, it's gonna be flickering. And second maximum value, we're gonna have it go to zero. So again, when the playhead hits the endpoint, this is gonna be 100. And then when the playhead gets to one second after the endpoint, it's gonna interpolate or animate down to zero. So let's take a look at what this is doing. Okay, so that works. You can see after one second, the flickering stops. We have our animation in. Now what's so amazing and versatile about this is I can move it and I can trim it, and that's always going to be wherever the endpoint of our layer is. If I wanna change the duration of this, I just go change this plus number here. Because again, this is in seconds. If I want it to be three seconds, I can move this back and watch after three seconds. stays up and solid. All right, now I want it to animate out. So now let's assign this to a variable. I'm gonna make up a term here. Let's call it flicker in equals. So that's our flicker in. Now we wanna add our flicker out. So to close this off, I'm gonna do semicolon. And I'm gonna just copy this whole line. And I'm gonna go to the second line, paste. And let's just change the words here. This is flicker out. And we wanna change these attributes. So instead of in point, it's gonna be out point out point and we want our minimum to be one second before the out point that's when we want our, tra our transition to start our amplitude to change and we don't need out point plus one we just need out point and out point minus one is going to be equal to zero and then it'll go to 100. so starting at one second before our out point that is when our animation will start Okay, and there we have it. But the problem now is we lost our animation in, we lost that flicker in. So to get that back, I just need to go down and call them both out. So let's type in flicker in plus flicker out. And now I have both. There's the flicker in, there's the flicker out. And again, versatility, I don't have to tinker with any keyframes. Who has time for keyframes? I certainly don't. Oh, and the last thing I wanna do is I don't want this to come up to 100 opacity. So if I go back down to opacity here in the transform effect, I want it to be 25. So I can just change this actually, and that will be uh, the maximum. You can see here, as I move it past the transition, it's flickering for the transition, and then it goes and levels off 
at 25 after one second. Now, speaking of no time, I'm gonna go grab this layer and hit E, and I'm gonna grab all these effects, and we're gonna create an animation preset. I'm gonna to go to the Effects and Presets panel, and at the bottom, you can see a button that says Create New Animation Preset, and I'm gonna to navigate to my User Presets folder, and that's where you're actually gonna install this. If you download this freebie, drop it into your User Presets. So we'll call this Boone's Flickering Opacity Transition. So narcissistic. And now I'll go to animation presets and here's my user presets folder and here is the effect. Well, first let's just take a look at what this is doing. So now watch the difference here. I'm gonna grab all these other 19 selections here and then I'm just gonna double click my preset. And now let's see what we created. And there you have it, there's our animation. The reason I wanted to create this preset and make this super automated and easy to work with using expressions is because each Aaron Dismont has like four little sub areas and we're gonna be animating into each of those individual ones. So I wanna be able to throw this preset directly over those and just have them animate on really quick. I also was gonna create an animation uh, preset for these stroke animations. So at the end of the day, this animation is not going to have any keyframes. Very cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Don't forget, you can go follow the link in the video description to download the free preset. Donations are appreciated. And all the other resources and links are down there as well. And I'll catch you in the next one.